Okay, now um, today, unfortunately, we don't have a whole lot of time to answer question, field questions about your finite state machine that you were supposed to draw and, and hand in. I've helped a few people outside of class, but we've got some, uh, we've got a, there's a lot of material we need to cover today for your homework assignment, your problems that are going to be due. You got two assembly language programs that are due uh, on Thursday, a couple days from now. So let me just say, let me just mention, um, in helping a few students, let me just give you some tips maybe that, that you might, that might be valuable. When you do your start, if you start in a state like this, um, what you need, what I recommend you do is you have separate, you're going to have um, one transition for, um, on, an, on identifiers that are unary, and I recommend you have another transition on, a separate transition on each dot command. So one transition on a, on a dot in, and another transition on a dot block, and another transition on the mnemonics that are non-unary. Do you see what I mean? And then what happens, these non-unary ones, um, so anyway, I recommend that's how you start out. And these, these non-unary ones, the um, operand specifier is going to be there. But now remember that I sent a little email out because the branch instructions, with the branch instructions, it's optional that you put the comma I, the addressing mode. So you'll need to take that into account also on your finite state machine. So anyway, that's just a little tip. Yeah, question? So we can put the token Yeah, I, and I recommend you do that for these dot block, for these dot commands, because these dot commands do two completely different things. Yeah. And so you should go to a separate state for each one. Okay. Because see, the dot, for example, the dot n doesn't have anything after it, but the dot block has either a decimal or a hex constant that says how many, you know, so, that, so they'll be handled completely separately after that. So it's good to have a separate state for each one of those. So I, I should have told you this last time, but anyway, better late than never. <laughs> yeah, question? The, the purpose of this is token. Correct. That is a really good point. What this is, finite state machine tells you is whether you have a correct line of assembly language code. Yeah. That's right. Yeah, this one is the start. Yeah, this one is the start state. PS start or whatever. Yeah. And what I'm, what I'm recommending is that you have a transition on non-unaries, a, transi a transition on, a, on the dot end command, specifically a transition on the uh, dot block, and a transition on the unary or Non-unary, non well, whatever. One of these on a non-unary. And then you can use subscripts. I mean, you can use notes to say which ones go there. You know, like we did before, like we did in the example. Are we good? So anyway, if you have more questions about that, you can ask me after class. Um, but it, we, like I say, we, have to, we need to move on. Now, here's what we're going to be doing from now on till the end of the course. What we're going to do now is we've basically, we're, we are finishing up chapter 7. And the reason we did chapter 7 was to get you started on your project. Now, also, uh, you notice I sent out a notice that your first stage of your project has been graded and handed back, and I've got comments on there. So what you need to do now is um, debug, the, get, get that lexical analyzer debugged. Okay, so if you're, there are bugs in there, because you, there's no sense going on and doing the second phase of your project until your lexical analyzer works. If your lexical analyzer is, doesn't work, your parser can't work correctly. So get that thoroughly debugged with that list of um, cases that we, that we did. All right, And make sure, like I said before, if I make a comment to change your code, that's not optional. I, won't, you'll get, I, I will reject your next submission if you don't take my, if you don't change your, you know, the implementation as I uh, Put in the notes in, in the in the grading, okay? So yeah. Do you want us to like return in? 
no, I don't want you to return in this one. But just get it fixed up and, and then on the next one, you know, is to, to print out the listing, it'll be correct for that and I'll look at it then. Yeah, good, good question. Are we good? Is everybody clear? So now, from now on till the end of the course, we're gonna, what we're going to do today is we're going to, we skipped chapter 6 to get to chapter 7 so you could get started on your project. Now, now you should be able, you should be working on your project now in parallel as we go back to chapter 6 and start doing some more assembly language coding, okay? So we had a little bit of a discontinuity there and now you're going to have to be doing two things at once. Your mind is going to be in chapter 7 working on your project and at the same time you're going to be doing these assembly language programs. But these assembly language programs are all very short. You know, we're going to learn our task now in chapter 6 is to learn how the compiler translates from C to assembler. All right? That's the that's the uh, that's our objective. And here, let me also now give you a <clears throat> word of advice about the final exam. The final exam is going to be very much mostly on this chapter six. There will be a, there will be a whole series of questions. I will give you a, a program in C and you will need to translate it to assembly language. That, that, the most of the final exam is going to be just that. It's, our, our objective is to understand how, what a compiler does, how it translates, okay? So all of these examples in chapter six that we're gonna do, this is all, most of the final exam is gonna be this. And like I say, on the final exam, there won't be any Java code, there won't be anything about your, you know, your project, it'll be, it'll be this, okay? Because this is the, the meat of kind of like computer systems. So, and you, and you should be thinking now, you know, when you, when you, uh, when you write a program in a high, high order language like Java or C or C++, what we're going to learn now is what the compiler does. How does the compiler translate that down? So now you'll have a deeper understanding of, what, of how your program, the resources that it actually takes to execute a program that you write. See, because we'll be able to see what's all involved at this lower level of abstraction at the assembly level. Are we good? Any questions about general overall? Okay, so now, chapter six, compiling to the assembly level. Now, first thing we need to learn is we're going to learn a new addressing mode. Okay? Now, let's review. Here we have direct addressing. Now, that's, this is the first one we learned. Now, in direct addressing, what does it say here? The operand equals what? Mem sub operand specifier. So now what does that mean? That means that the operand, you can think of memory as an array of bytes. And this is like, mem is like an array and it's mem sub operand specifier. And so what does this mean? This means the operand specifier is the what? What is the operand specifier in direct addressing? It's the address, yeah, that's right. It's the address in memory of where the operand is. So it's mem sub. Now what about the next one that we learned was, what was the next one we learned? Immediate addressing. Remember what the operand specifier, what the operand is in immediate addressing? Yeah, say it again. Yeah, exactly. So here we have immediate addressing and the operand specifier is the operand. Okay, and remember how we used um, we did uh, constants, you know, we used immediate addressing when we did, we used dot equate for the constants and we remember how that, how we did immediate addressing for that. Are you with me on that? Now, you guys, the new, the, this next addressing mode is called stack relative addressing. All right, and here's the definition of stack relative addressing. What, it, what happens is, it's, notice that it's still, operand is mem sub something, but instead of being sub operand specifier, what is it? SP. Yeah, SP. Now, what is SP? Stack, stack. stack pointer. So you take, so the, what, the way this addressing mode works is it takes the content of the stack pointer, it adds the operand specifier to that, and then that is the what? The no, that is the address in memory of where the operand is. Are you with me? 
Yeah, question? How is, like, how is that used? Yeah, that's a good question. We're going to see in just one minute how it's used. <laughs> yeah. In fact, here, here's the thing, you guys. What's the memory model of C plus, of C, what, what's the, what is the C memory model? What's the first part? Global variables are stored where? Fixed location memory. And that means that in assembly language, they're allocated with what? Dot what? Dot block. Because that allocates at a fixed location memory. All right. Now, what was the second part of the memory model? Local variables and what? Parameters are stored where? On the runtime what? On the runtime what? Stack. And what do we have here in, in uh, stack relative addressing? The stack pointer. Okay, so these are not stored in a fixed location in memory. These local variables are going to be stored on the runtime stack. So we need stack relative addressing to be able to access local variables on the runtime stack. And then the third was dynamically allocated, uh, variables allocated from the heap. Yeah. So when you run up to top? Yeah, we will see. We're going to have pictures and everything. You will see exactly. Yeah, good question. So the stack pointer plus the operand specifier is the address and memory of the operand. Now, in order to use stack relative addressing, we have to have a way to push stuff on the stack and, and pop stuff off of the stack. And we do this with uh, the way we push stuff onto the stack is we, we use the add SP instruction. Okay? So add SP means add to the stack pointer. So here's the binary for it. The, the uh, op code is 01010, and then it has an addressing AAA field. Are you with me? The mnemonic is add SP. And look at what is the, what is that called? That left arrow SP, what, is, what language is that? Good, yeah, that's the register transfer language specification. And what, is, what does add SP do? It just does SP gets what? SP plus operand. Okay. Is everybody good? So that's how you add. Well, and that, that's what, what we're going to do is we're going to add to the stack pointer. That's how we're going to push items onto the runtime stack. And then if we have an add SP, we probably have a what? Subtract SP. Okay, so here, so sub SP, there's the instruct, the op code is 01011. It has an addressing AAA field. The mnemonic is SUBSP. And it, what it does is SP gets SP minus the operand. Okay, so that's, a, so we pop by subtracting. Okay. And now here's the question. How does the stack pointer get initialized when you first run a program? Now this, um, so here's how it works. So here um, we have the PEP9 execution option. And uh, so what happens when it, whenever you're in PEP9 and you click execute, what happens is SP gets mem sub FFF. Four. And then the program counter gets 0, 0, 0, 0. Now, first of all, why does the program counter get 0, 0, 0, 0? Because that's where the program, that's where the instructions are loaded. They're loaded where the program counter is 0, 0, 0, 0. But, the, but how does the stack pointer get initialized? Well, here. What is at this mem FFF4? Well, here in figure 4.41 from the chapter 4, let's, here, let's go back. Where, Let's look at what is at FFF4. So here on this memory map, what value is at FFF4? Can you read that? What is, what, what is, what is that content? FB8F. So here. That is FB8F. Now let's go back. So here let's do FB8F. FB8F. Now, now, so do you see that when, when it says SP gets mem sub FFF4, what does SP get? Right. Yeah, so what value does it get? Here, according to the memory map, what value does SP get? FB8F. FB8F. So that's exactly right. So you see, so what that does is that points SP at FB8F. SP actually has the value FB8F, so it's like it's an address. So it's the address at the top of the stack. And here, if you look also on this figure 4.41, uh, what do we have? Where is that FB8F? You see it up at the, at the top on the right-hand side. That's you see that's FB8F, 
And if we subtract one from FB8F, where will we be? That's how we'll do what? Look on the left-hand side. You see, what does it say there? Runtime stack. That's where it is in memory. Is everybody clear on this? I'll tell you what, let's do an example and I'll show you when we see how it works. Let's, let's run through an example and, let, and we'll see how it works. But the, okay, the upshoot of all this of, this, of these few last little technical details, is that when you start your program and you execute it, the stack pointer is initialized to FB8F, and that is the region in memory where the runtime stack is, starts. Okay, so that initializes our stack pointer. That's how it gets initialized. All right, now, now what we're going to do to show how this stack relative addressing works and to show how we manipulate the stack pointer accordingly, I have a little nonsense example here in figure 6.1. And so what let's do is now let's trace through this and we'll see the details of how it works. Now what this program does is it pushes three letters and then an integer and then one more letter onto the runtime stack. All right, that's what it does. And, then, and so it pushes them onto the runtime stack. And then once those are pushed onto the runtime stack, it outputs those three letters. It's just a little nonsense example. It outputs those three letters and the integer value of the number and the other letter. And then it pops them off of the runtime stack. So this is, the output of this is just BMW335i. Okay, that's what the output is. If you run this, I don't want to de demo it. It's trivial to demo. Yeah, I, if, if you put this in and run it, boom, that, that's what'll come out. But here's how it does it. It does it by, by putting these on the runtime stack. So now here, let's take a look. What's the very first instruction? Load by the accumulator what? What, single character B, addressing mode? Immediate, so do you, do you see that that puts the B in, into the accumulator? And now, now what's the next instruction? <coughs> Store by the accumulator what? Minus one, but what addressing mode? Stack relative addressing. So now what is the, where, what is the value of the stack pointer? FB8F. What is FB8F minus one? What is FB8F minus one? FB8E. So where does it put that B? Right here. Now does everybody see that? Is everybody clear on that? This is crucial. This is how it works. Are we good? Now what's the next instruction? Load by the accumulator of what? M. So do you, do you see that puts the M in the right half of the accumulator. And what's the next instruction? Store by the accumulator of what? Negative 2. So what is FB8F minus 2? FB8D, is that right? F, B, A, D, and so that puts what? The M there. Uh, are we good? Is everybody clear? Now what's the next instruction? What about a camera, what? W, let's put it where? F, B, A, A, B, C, right, is that right? W. Is everybody clear? Now what's the next one? Not load byte accumulator, but what? Load word accumulator. Now what are we, now we're not just putting it in the right half of the accumulator, what are we doing? Load word accumulator is putting what? Decimal number what? 335 using what addressing mode? Immediate. Now did you see that's putting the whole word in there. But now where are we? Now where are we storing it? Now we're, now we're doing store word accumulator into where? Now why minus five? Why not minus four? Because an integer takes two bytes. Now this is crucial. <laughs> Do you see? So this, it's not at FB8C, it's not at FB8B, it's at FB8 what? A, I think, is that right? So this is an A, B, and this, this is C, and this is D, and this is E, right? So this is 335, and that's the integer value takes up two bytes there. And you see why that's minus 5. And then what's the next one? 
What about accumulator what? I, and then at what? Minus 6, so this would be what? If B of what? 8 what? 9, right? 1 less, are you with me? And that's where the I is going to be. Is everybody clear on this? Now, okay, we stuck them out. Now comes the actual push. Now, how do we do the actual push? What's the next instruction? Yeah, so, oh, you know what? I think I misspoke a minute ago. Is this one sub? So, yeah, I think I might have misspoken a, a minute ago. You, you sub accumulator, you subtract from the accumulator to push. You add the accumulator to pop. Right, so now we're going to push. Do you see what I'm saying? So what is it saying there? What is it? Sub accumulator, sub, subtract from the stack point. Oh, sorry, not sub accumulator. Subtract stack point or what? Six immediate. Now, what, so what does that do? So here's one, two, three, four, five, six. So after that, where is the, where is the stack pointer? The stack pointer is here. Now that's what does the push. Now, does everybody see? So now this is the top of the stack. <laughs> right? So another way to visualize this is like this. Here's the bottom of the stack. And there's like one, two, three, four. There's like five cells like this. And here's the top of the stack. Okay, and so now these are on the runtime side. Now how do we access these using what, using what addressing mode? Stack relative. So now what's the next instruction? Load by the accumulator what? Five. Now what's going to get into the accumulator? The stack pointer now is up here. So what's it, so, so this is, this, so what's five down from here? The what? The B. Are you with me? See, this is this is zero, one. This is at ad, this relative to the stack pointer. This is address zero. This is address one. This is address three. This is address four, and this is address five relative to the stack pointer. See, when the stack pointer is up here, this is relative to the stack pointer. This is zero, one, three. Four and five. Before the stack pointer was up there, here, let me do it, let's do it like this. If the stack pointer is here, this is address zero, one, three, four, and five. When the stack pointer was here at the beginning, what was this address? This was what? Minus one, this is what? Minus two, this is what? Minus three, this one was what? Minus five, and this was what? Minus six. So when the stack pointer was down here, we put minus one here, minus two here, minus three, minus. But then after the stack pointer got here, we, 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 we access them this way. Now does everybody see how that works? This is low level hardware details. Are we good? So now, do you see then that what's the next instruction after the sub SB6? Load by the accumulator what? Five using what? Stack relative. So what does that do? That takes, that takes the, the B here and puts it in the accumulator. And then what? Store by the accumulator to the output, the memory mapped I.O. To the care out. Does everybody see? So that's B. And then, and then, and then it'll take the M. It'll load by the accumulator M, it'll output that, and then it'll load by the accumulator W, it'll output that. And now it'll do what? Not load by the accumulator, but what? Load word accumulator, and now, oh sorry, it doesn't, do, has, it doesn't have to do load word accumulator, it can just do what? Deso, because it does that for us. Does everybody see how that works? And so the Deso, the 335 comes out, and then boom. And then after, we, after the BMW 335 comes out, What's the very last thing we do? Add SP6 immediate. And what does that do? That whoosh, pops them back off the stack. Yeah. Why do you have to count down? 
Yeah, because that's the way it's going to work whenever we do local variables. See, when we translate a program and if we have local variables, we push them onto the runtime stack. And then if that function calls another function, pushes them onto the stack. Each time the stack pointer goes up, it goes up. And while you are executing the function, that's where the stack pointer is as you execute the function. Are you with me? That's, yeah, that, now does everybody understand every detail of this mechanism? We, we need to, is everybody clear on this? This is, so here I have these figures here. In figure 6.2 are the absolute addresses with this FB8F blah, 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 blah. Okay, you don't need to remember that. You see what I mean? I mean, if the stack pointer is initialized, if somebody modifies the operating system and the stack pointer is initialized someplace else, it doesn't matter. You don't ever have to write FB8F, FB8E. Is all you have to do is, in that code, is use stack relative addressing with negative one to get them on there, subtract the stack pointer, and then do you use stack relative addressing to do what you need to do, and then add SP, we'll pop them off. So here in figure 6.2, we have at the absolute addresses with the actual hex values of the address. But look, here in figure 6.3, you can think of the you can think of stack relative addresses. In other words, the address is relative to, to where the stack pointer is. But you always have to remember where the stack pointer is to do your to make your computations correct. Yeah. So in theory you can write that is correct. You could in theory do this example that way without actually doing sub SP yeah, to get it to the top. But but we do that we did we did that to illustrate that that's the way you have to do it whenever the compiler translates makes a function call. Because when you make a function call, you remember, haha, a little bit of a review, what happens when you call a function? Uh, what happens when you call a non-void function? Push storage for the return value, boom, then what? Push the actual parameters, then what? Push, oh, this is good. Return address, and then what? Storage for those, so boom, so there it is. So once you do all that stuff, that's the stack pointer is up there when you're executing the, the, the function. You see? And if, you, if that function calls another one, another stack frame goes up, and the stack pointer is up there. So the stack pointer is always at the top of the stack whenever you, whenever you, uh, whenever the compiler has to, the way the compiler translates the statements, the st it, it knows that the stack pointer is at the top of the stack, not at the bottom. But you have to move it. Well, the compiler has to generate the code to move it. Right. And it, so what we're talking about here is code generation of the compiler. The compiler has to generate the sub SP to get it to the top of the stack when it does each one of those steps. Yeah. No, no, that's a really good question. When you add SP, then they are popped up. Th those values are still left over, but they will be overwritten the next time you do a sub SP. So there's actually a, a, a computer science technical term for that. It's called garbage. And what they are is those are leftover values. Are you with me? Those are leftover values that you know will be overwritten. So they are dialogue, but we don't take the time to zero them out. Yeah, yeah it's ne you never zero those out, yeah. Unless you have, now what does that mean about security? See, you can have leftover values in there and you can probe around, but anyway, normally it's not done. All right? So now, let's take a look. So that's one example. So, so now, now, let's take a look at local variables. With local variables, you push the locals with a sub SP, you access the locals with stack relative addressing, and you pop the locals with add SP. So now, here's what we're going to do next. In figure 6.4, we are going to translate this program in figure 6.4. Now, no fair peeking ahead. I think what we should do is one of these exercises where we go around a class. We're going to start doing this from now on until the end of the semester. All right? So, all right. So here we are. Are you ready? Now, first of all, let's make a few observations. Here we have int main, okay, and const int bonus. Now, is bonus, bonus is a variable, yes or no? no? Correct, it is not. So is it allocated any, is it allocated on a fixed location of memory? No. Is it allocated on the runtime stack? No, it's still just a constant. What about exam one? <laughs> that is 
a what? Local variable. So where is it going to be allocated? On the runtime stack. And furthermore, exam two and score are also. Now here's what you need to do in order to do these translations. You need to draw the runtime stack after these things are allocated. Okay, so here let's do this. So what are the local variables? Exam one, exam two, and score. Now they get allocated from the bottom up. So it's going to be like this. Exam one. Exam two. And score. Are you with me? So now my question is, if the stack pointer is here, after they've been allocated, my question is, what is the stack relative address of score? Relative to the stack pointer, what is the address of score? Zero. Zero. And relative to the stack pointer, what is the address of exam two? Well, wait, what is the type of score? I know it's a variable. Well, what is its type? It's an integer, so it's going to take how many bytes? Two. two bytes. So do you see that the address of this is going to be two relative, if this is the stack pointer, it's going to be two relative to that. Is everybody clear? And what is the stack address of exam, exam one? Four. So this is going to be four. So what we're going to do is, the way the compiler gener uh, uh, translates this, it equates these to their stack relative addresses. It doesn't use dot block. All right. So now here. So now let's start. First, the first, <laughs> the first uh, instruction is always the easiest. Who wants to start? <coughs> What's our first instruction here? Yeah. Right. Oh, who started? <laughs> we all did. So branch to main. What is going to be, now, what's, what's next in the listing? The uh, bonus, what about bonus? Okay, next in the listing is bonus. And that's a symbol. Okay, so now, we'll, now let's start by going around the room. Who wants to do this one? Okay, go ahead. Yeah, are you going to have to speak up? I'm a little hard of hearing. Yeah. Not equate 10. All right? Now, okay, so, now, so we're going to go this way, and we're going to go back. So in the back row. Okay, okay, so now, so now, we, so now in the code we had um, bonus. The next in thing in the code is what? Exam 1. So, so what will be here? Exam 1. And now what will this be? Yes, be, yeah. and why isn't it? Because, dot, because these are local variables. They are allocated on the runtime stack. They are not allocated with dot block at a fixed location in memory because they're not globals. So, okay. Actually, I think you'll see in a minute. I think you'll see in a minute how this works. Okay, so exam one dot e is the dot equate for, and now what's, okay, now what's the next one? It, so what goes here? Exam two, and that's what? Dot equate what? Two. And the next one, even though we might not quite understand it yet, is what? Score. Yeah, score. And that's what? Dot equate zero. Right? Okay. Now, next. in line is, this was branch to main. Now we're ready to start what? Main. So here's main. Now, you guys, when we first started main, I mean, the first thing that we have to do in main, remember, the stack pointer was initialized to down here. Right? So what's the very first thing we have to do in main to allocate storage for the local variables? What's the first thing we have to do to in main? So see, the, the stack pointer 
is initialized down here. So what's the very, see, these statements are not executable. This is the first statement that executes. The very first statement that executes in our program has to do what? Uh, yeah, hold on, hold on, that's not your turn. <laughs> okay, so what do we have to do to get up to here? Yeah, say it a little louder. Exactly. Be confident. <laughs> sub SP, how much do we have to sub SP by? Um? I think six, right? Two, four, six. Is everybody clear? Now this is going to be sub SP six addressing mode. Mm? Yes, immediate. Is everybody clear on that? Okay, this six, we're sub, subtracting SP six immediate. That gets the stack point up here. All right, is everybody clear? It just seems so like that. No, these don't generate code. Yeah, I understand. We, yeah, there's some stuff up here that the computer has to generate, that the compiler has to generate by looking at by looking at like, by look yeah by looking at those exam one, exam two, and score. It sees that they are local and that they're going to be allocated on the runtime stack, and it counts up where they are going to be on the runtime like stack. That the SP or the what, what is it the S you know, the SP has already moved up. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Yes, it kind of, it, yeah, yes. It's kind of looking. It's, yeah, 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 yeah. It's kind of looking ahead. You have to kind of look ahead and see where the what, what, where it's going to be. I just feel like that's or to do that. That seems. What can be? Do you think that could be automated? Aha! Uh -huh. Whatever we're doing here, we can automate it with the computer, and the compiler can do it. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's a mechanical thing. Yeah. Yeah, notice that we yeah, notice that we, we push them all as a group with one S sub SP. And so and but we know that when, when the statements in the program are executing, that the stack pointer will be here. And these will be the stack relative addresses of each local of each one of the local variables. So as the program is executing, the stack pointer is fixed there at the top of the runtime stack. Alright? Now there's one more thing here. What did we do? Oh, we need, oh, actually we forgot. Um, well, okay, let's do the trace tags later. See, we need trace tags. Okay, so actually what we're going to do is we're going to say push, and we're going to do hashtag. Now, what are we, what are we, well, uh, let's do the trace tags later. Um, sub SP, okay, now, what's the very next, is, what's the very next thing? Scan F. D, D, ampersand, exam one. Do you, can you translate scan F? Yeah, you're on a type of decimal input to DESI. Exactly. Decimal input. Okay. Now, what are we doing a decimal input of? The first thing is what? Exam one. Exam one. So now this is DESI exam one. Exam one. But now here's my question. Now, what is the addressing mode? Could be S for scan. Yes. Now, you just put S instead of D. Because what that will do is that will take the stack pointer, plus four here, and it'll deci into here. Now what's the next statement? Deci, exam two, stack relative. Is everybody clear? Now next, what about score gets exam one plus exam two divided by two plus bonus? <coughs> So remember how the assignment statement works? You can pass, it's fine to pass. You want to pass? And the next? You passed it, okay, good, all right, that's all right. The next? Uh, load word accumulator. Load word accumulator what? Exam one. Load word accumulator, exam one, addressing mode? Okay. Yes, it's on the runtime stack. Okay, so now, see, we were calculating what's on the right-hand side of the assignment statement, then we'll store it. To, are you with me? Okay, next. Add accumulator, Add accumulator of what? Exam two, stack relative addressing. Next. How do we divide by two? ASR, ASR accumulator, right? 
ASR Arcuna. That's unary. Well, and next, add a cumulative. Ah, add what? Add accumulator what? Bonus. bonus addressing mode. What is bonus? Is it a variable? Yes, immediate. Because bonus is a constant equated to 10, so that still works. The, this is a little bit of review. Is everybody clear on this? Okay, and now what? Now that we got that all in the accumulator, now what's the next, what's the next one? Next? Store word accumulator. Okay, so store word accumulator, and what are we, where are we starting to? Score addressing mode? Yes. All right. Next, uh, what's the next thing? Printf score. Uh, how do we do printf score equals? Who's next? What will we do here? I think so. Good deal. Stro what? Yeah, you know, we got to have some place down below. We we'll call it what? Message addressing mode. That's direct, isn't it? I think that's I think that's how we do strings, right? So we'll have a message below. And now, oh, now next what? What do we have, now? What comes next in that uh, printf? We have to print out the value of what? Of a score. And what what is this, what is its type? Uh, integer. integer. So therefore. De yes, deso. Deso what? Uh, deso score, uh, S. score stack relative because it's on the runtime stack. See how this all is working just like we did before, only it's with stack relative addressing. Yeah. Don't we have to print out the new line? And now we have to print out the new line. Notice that the new line is after the score. Now how do we print out the new line? Remember how to print out the new line? Actually, I think we have to load by the accumulator the, the new line character, right? So how do we do that? Load by accumulator what? Bash in. Immediate. Next. Uh, no, not character up, but how do we, but you're close. That was pep eight. <laughs> this is pep nine. <laughs> there we, yeah, store by accumulator to where? Store by accumulator to where? The memory mapped IO. Remember that? Care out, addressing mode? Yes, that's how we got that character output. And now there's one more thing, and we're not going to return zero, but now there's one more thing we need to do to make this clean. We push that stuff on the runtime stack. Now what's the last thing we should do? Yeah, how do we pop it off? Add SP how much? Six, addressing mode, immediate, and then some trace tags, and then what goes here? Stop, and then what? Message, blah, 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 and then dot end. All right, let's see if we did it right. Here we go, drum roll. Did we do it? Let's look. Somebody check this. I don't have. Somebody check me out here. Check us out. Did we do it? Did we do it good? Man, we're good. Yeah, we're all we're all machines. I'm turning you guys into machines. <laughs> so everybody see? Yeah. Question. Um, so the subtract stack pointer just moves it. The stack pointer down. Yeah, back down. To, yes. Anytime you you add at the end, you should you should subtract. <laughs> Sorry, anytime you subtract, in the end you should add. Yeah, so, so yeah. How was it six again? It was six because there's, why was it six? Because the stack pointer starts here, so the stack pointer minus two is here, the stack pointer minus four is here, and the stack pointer minus six is here. So that's how it gets it up to here. Because there were six bytes altogether that were allocated. Are you with me? Do you see how that works? And furthermore, you guys, look. 
Here, here is a picture in figure 6.5 of before the sub SP executes and then after sub SP executes. All right, so this corresponds to our picture on the board. Okay, and there's one more thing I want before I answer your question. There's one more thing that I want to point out. Anytime you do this, we need to do a, these trace tags. So notice that exam one, what's the trace tag for exam one? Hashtag 2D. Why is that? Why is, what's the hashtag 2D on exam 1? What does that mean? 2-byte decimal. And now furthermore, 2-byte decimal for exam 2, 2-byte decimal for exam for score. But now also, when we do a sub-SP, what do we have to put? Push what? Hashtag what? Exam 1, hashtag exam 2, hashtag what? Score. You know, I'm, gonna, I'm sorry I'm not going to answer your question because I want to do one last demo to show you how this works, how this these hashtag trace tags work when you push and pop. Now watch this. I think you're going to like this. This is figure 6.4. Here comes our demo. Okay, so now here's our demo. What we're going to do here is we're going to come here and we'll do figure 6.4. And So here's our exam 1, exam 2, blah, blah, blah. We'll copy the source. I had a previous program in there. So here it's all set up. We'll go to system and we'll clear memory and we'll do a little trace. Now watch this you guys. And now we're going to do a build. Now check this out. And now we are going to start debugging. Now look you guys, this is really cool. The first, we're about to execute what? Branch to what? Branch to main. Now watch what happens when we, when we do branch to main. We branch to main, yeah. And now what is this doing? Sub SP 6 comma I. What does it say in, uh, uh, with our trace tags there? Exam 1, exam 2, score. Now watch this. Are you ready for this? This is going to be cool. Boom. There it is. You can see the runtime stack. And notice how it's labeled symbolically with exam 1, exam 2, and score. So it knows to put those there because you told it so in these trace tags. And here, here's the FB, here's the, the, here's the FB, you know, those are the actual hex addresses. Now watch this. So watch this. Here, we'll single step. So if we, if we do decimal input, we just did decimal input exam one, and we're about to do decimal input exam two. So decimal input exam one. So take the input from six, from here, and put it there. You see how slick that is? What's the next one? Uh, now we're going to do decimal input exam two. So we'll click that. And there it goes to exam two. Are you with me? Is everybody clear? And, now, and so now what's going to happen? We're going to do load word accumulator exam one. So what's going to be in the accumulator? There's a 68 in the accumulator. And now what happens? Add. So there's a 152 in the accumulator right here. You see right there. And now what's it going to do? ASRA. ASRA first, right? So that, the 152, it'll divide it by two, all right? It just did ASRA divided by 2. There's a 76. And now what's it going to do? The bonus. Okay. And then what? Store it in, into score. Now watch what happens. Boom. There it is in score on the runtime stack. Do you see how that's working? Is that slick or is that slick? And now what? Stro and boom. Score equals. And now what? Deso the score. Boom. There's the 86. And now what? Oh, this one we can't see because it's a new line, and there's a new line here if you could see it. And now what, you guys? Add a piece of watch. Boom! It went away. Is that cool? Or what? It, uh, okay, and then one more. We've got to do the stop. All right, so that's the, so that's the demo. Okay. Uh, yeah, do you have a quick question? Um, yeah, about the, the translation. Yeah, about the translation? Yes. And how do we know how do we know that? How do we know that it's going to be stack relative and we have to translate it this way instead of the other way? How did we know that? Because they are local variables. Because that's why the C memory model is so important. Global variables are stored where? Where are global variables stored? At a fixed location in memory ac accessed with or allocated with what? Dot block. Local variables are stored where? on the runtime stack allocated with what? Sub SP. Are you with me? Now is, is it now is it starting to make a little bit more yeah, sense? So in, the, in the 
previous examples we've done with this same program, they've been global variables. They have been, but now this is the same one, but now they're now, now you see how different it is and how the memory model is completely different. Mm -hmm. And so this is a visual, this is really basic stuff. Really good. All right, good deal. See you next time.